What's up YouTube, Saf here on Super Saf TV and in this video I'm going to be comparing the specs of the Nikon D5300 to the Nikon D5200. So the 5300 has just been announced, it's the latest addition to the D5000 series from Nikon and it improves on the D5200 which is a great camera. You can check out a full review on the channel, there will be a link in the description right below that like button so do go ahead and check that out if you want a full hands-on review of the D5200. But what's different between these two? Well uh, do hit that thumbs up button and let's find out in this head-to-head -head spec comparison. So starting off with the sensor size and resolution, resolution wise pretty much similar here 24.1 versus 24.2 you're not going to notice much of a difference here and especially because of uh, that sheer size of images it's going to be absolutely great now the sensor size is the same but the big difference is the fact that the d5300 does not have an optical low pass filter so for those of you who don't know what that is basically an optical low pass filter is on most dslrs and that helps eliminate aliasing distortions on images but not having this it uh, gives you much sharper and crisper images so with the d5300 Nikon is saying because of the sheer number of pixels on the new processing engine they've got the XP4 versus the XP3 you're not going to really notice much of a difference in terms of the aliasing distortions so that's really good and it's going to result in more sharper and crisp images Nikon are doing this with lots of their DSLRs they started with the D800e they moved that over onto the D7100 as well and now you've got it on the D5300 so clearly it has been successful ISO range has also been increased so the D5200 you've got 100 to 6400 on the D5300 you've got 100 to 12,800. Both are extendable to 25,600, although I wouldn't recommend it going up all the way to that. So you've got a bit of an increase here. The new processing engine should also help get lower noise at the higher ISOs as well, so that's nice to see. Both of these have quite a few similarities. I'm gonna quickly run through them. You've got 39 autofocus points with nine cross type. Great to see this on this price DSLR, all those autofocus points, definitely beneficial. Both the same on here. You've got the same max continuous shooting as well, five frames a second, not too bad. Uh, not too great either. You've got the same uh, maximum shutter speed as well, one four thousandth of a second, the same uh, flash sync speed, one two hundredth of a second. So a uh, pretty standard here, 95% coverage. So you've only got 95%, not 100% like some of the others, such as uh, the uh, D7100. Both of these have a single SD card slot as well, not a dual SD card slot. Pretty expected for uh, this range of DSLR. Some improvements come in the monitor. So although both of these have a swivel and tilt monitor, this is really great in the D5000 series, especially if you're doing video, getting some awkward angles on things is really beneficial. But on the D5300, you've got a 3.2 inch screen versus the three inch screen of the D5200. There's also an increase in resolution as well on the D5300. Again, a welcome change. The other changes that you've got is in video as well. So you've got the standard 24, 25 and 30 frames a second at 1080p on both of these. The D5200 came with 1080i at 60 frames a second. So for slow motion, that was quite nice, but still it was interlaced, not progressive. The Nikon D5300 is the first Nikon DSLR that comes with 1080p at 60 frames a second. So that slow motion is going to be really nice and it's progressive this time, not interlaced. 720p still at 50 and 60 frames a second. Would have liked to have seen 720 at 120 frames a second now, now that you've got 1080 at 60 frames a second. But that's not included here, but you know, can't be too picky. That is a nice improvement here. Having that slow motion at full HD 1080p is quite nice and progressive rather than interlaced like we had last time. Both of these also have a mic in which is nice to see for video now in terms of the sizes of both of these the d5300 although it's got a larger screen actually comes in smaller so it's smaller in terms of the height and the width and it also weighs a less than the d5200 so it's great to see that they've packed in new features but they've managed to keep the weight lower now in terms of wireless transfer the d5300 you had to buy the wu1a wireless mobile adapter so you had to add that on and that would allow you wireless transfer so you can uh, transfer files on to a smartphone or a tablet whether it's android or iOS. You also have some remote controls over the camera with your smartphone or tablet. The D5300 comes with that built in so you don't have to go out and buy anything additional. It just comes built in the package. The WU1A you can pick it up for about £50 in the UK but it's quite small and it's easy to lose as well. So that's quite nice to see that this is built in on the D5300 in a smaller and lighter package as well. Now finally looking at price you can pick the D5200 up right now for roughly about $700 or between $450 to £500 pounds here in the UK so quite lower to the price that it launched at initially now the D5300 is going to release at $800 roughly or £730 here in the UK with the release date of mid-November 
Now here's the thing, the D5200 is likely to drop in price further after the release of the D5300 and generally speaking the newer DSLRs as soon as they launch the price is quite higher and it does start dropping. So those are the key differences between these two cameras. The D5300 with some welcome changes you've got the lack of the optical low pass filter which should result in sharper images. You've got the higher range of ISO, the 1080p at 60 frames a second, the built-in wireless controls in a smaller and lighter package. So some uh, nice changes here. If you've got the D5200, I wouldn't say it's worth selling that and going for the D5300. The D5200 is still a pretty decent DSLR. And it's going to last you for some time. However, if you're a beginner on a DSLRs or if you're coming from the D3100 or the D3200 maybe, then the D5300 is a nice upgrade. One thing to bear in mind is, as I mentioned, the D5200 is going to be dropping in price even more with the release of the D5300. So it might be a perfect time to grab a bargain, get hold of the D5200. Once again, it is a, a great DSLR. So if you are beginning, uh, then uh, the D5200 is still a good option. So I would recommend that if you do want to save uh, some money. If you do want to take advantage of uh, the latest features of the D5300, then I'd probably advise waiting for a little bit just so that hype dies down a little bit and the prices come slightly down. But nevertheless, a great DSLR. What do you think of the D5300? Do drop me a comment below and let me know your thoughts. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you did, as always, please do hit that thumbs up button for me. It really does help me out and why not subscribe to the channel I've got plenty more content coming up on here thanks for watching this is Saf on Super Saf TV and I'll see you next time if you want to see more regular videos like this one then be sure to hit the subscribe button which will be below if you're on a mobile device it may be somewhere else if you want to see my previous related video then hit the link right here if you want to stay in touch over Facebook Twitter and Google Plus then all of the addresses will be there somewhere as well as direct links in the description below